Will we see Chris Tanev for the first time as a Dallas star tonight in San Jose? Tyler Sagan begins skating once again in his Evgeny Dodonov season over. Let's jump into it next on Locked on Star. Your Locked on Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans, and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. It's a pleasure to be with you. I'm Joey Erickson, former producer, a 105 through the fan, and play by play voice of the Chippewa Steel. Please be sure to subscribe. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. And as always, thank you so much for making us a part of your day and making us your first listen. The Stars begin a three game West Coast road trip beginning tonight in San Jose to take on the Sharks once again. And the question everyone is asking, will we see Chris Tanev for the first time? Let me know where you want to see him fit in this lineup. Who should he be paired with if he is playing tonight? for the first time as a Dallas star. We'll preview the Sharks. We'll play shooting star. So much news coming out of practice yesterday that we have to get into on today's episode. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Never miss an episode of Locked On Stars. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app. Use promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. So we'll begin with some news from Pete DeBoer as he spoke to the media yesterday after practice. And he mentioned that it was the first practice they've had in a few weeks. You forget they don't get a a ton of time to just practice at this time of the year because they're playing a ton of games and the stars haven't had consecutive days off in a row for a, a few weeks now. So he was happy with their energy level, which is a good sign he, he said uh, he feels it's to a level that he would expect at, at this point, which is uh, is very good news. Tyler Sagan began skating once again. He's still week to week, but uh, his return seems uh, a bit more uh, closer than Evgeny Dodonov, who has still not been able to put weight on that fracture in his lower body. So Evgeny Dodonov could be out for the season. He, of course, is on the LTIR, which means maybe there's some more moves upcoming for Jim Nill and this Dallas Stars front office. Or does Maverick Bork get a shot? That's uh, another question that can be thrown out there. Maybe we see him get an opportunity at the NHL level. Of course, his partner in crime, Logan Stankoven, has made quite the impact already. But good news on Tyler Sagan. He's still week to week, but it seems that uh, his return is nearing, which is uh, a good sign. And then uh, he mentioned, which is the real meat and potatoes of this conversation, was on Chris Tanev. And uh, there is still some immigration issues. The process of immigrating seems like it's taking forever. What's going on up there in Canada? Man, just let them cross the border. <laughs> um, but uh, it seems to be uh, taking a bit longer uh, than maybe we would have, spec- uh, have expected. But I, I think uh, the stars knew this was going to be uh, a bit of a process getting down here. But uh, they are cautiously optimistic was the phrase that uh, head coach Pete DeBoer used on uh, – Chris Tanev showing up in San Jose tonight. And then they ask him a few questions about him being inserted into the lineup, just jumping in. And I thought Pete DeBoer gave a a very interesting answer on how he believes Calgary does a lot of the same things that the stars do system wise. And he don't, he doesn't think it's going to be a complete 360 uh, of him jumping in and being a contributor in the lineup, which uh, I think is a good sign. You would love to just plug him in and play. And uh, he mentioned he, he's such a, a smart player, and we've seen it this season. He's a shutdown defenseman in his own zone. He, he's mobile. He, he does so well at facilitating the puck. 
out of his own zone and he brings a physical presence. And that brings us all to the question, where does he fit in? Who does he pair with? And uh, I've, uh, of course, noted that I would love to see him be paired with Miro Haskinen. Get Haskinen on his strong left side. Tanev plays on the right. You brought a it brought in a right shot defenseman for a reason. See if that opens up Miro Haskinen a bit more offensively because with Thomas Harley being paired with him lately, it kind of opens up Harley a bit more and Miro doesn't have to be as aggressive. I think if you put Miro with a reliable right shot defenseman, he's going to be very productive offensively, and he's going to be more aggressive, more of a Harley-like type. And then you can spread the wealth with Harley and Haskinen. But uh, I think the real key is for the stars, and this is what I really want to get to, is you have to break up Hawk and Paw and Lindell. That is the pairing that I believe needs to be broken up. They tried it early on in the year where they put Harley and Hockenpah, and they, they didn't love it a ton, but Lindell and Hockenpah have an expected goals against of 22.6, and they played almost 600 minutes of hockey together on the Stars this season. That's worst. That's worst of all Dallas Stars defensive pairs. So... When you talk about Chris Tanev, and this is where I get into, you can really throw some things together. It's not a guarantee that Tanev and Miro work brilliantly. It's not a guarantee that Tanev works in general, right? We all believe he will because the stars just need help. It doesn't really matter. But it, it's not a guarantee that Tanev jumps in with Miro and all of a sudden this is the best thing since sliced bread. So you can experiment a bit but at the same time you're trying to win hockey games at this point in the year and you don't have a ton of time to experiment or to find what works before the Stanley Cup playoffs so if it was me and you don't have Tanev with Miro Tanev and Lindell seems like the logical pairing and then you can have Hockenpah and or excuse me not Hockenpah he would be the odd man out then you can put uh, Harley and Lundquist, uh, and then you could have uh, Suter and Hockenpah, or, 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 or some combination of that, or even if Hockenpah isn't the odd man out, right? So I, I think you have Miro and Harley, and then you could put, let's say, Lindell and Tanev. Maybe you have Suter and Lindell, which I don't love on paper, but uh, Lindell and Suter, I think, is better than Lindell and Hockenpah, uh, to be honest. So it, it, it's it's kind of this cat and mouse game that the Stars have to figure out. But I am intrigued with Suter and Lundquist as well, because uh, I don't know if you want to break that pairing up, because in terms of expected goals against, they're the best at uh, 7.8. Suter and Lundqvist have actually been pretty decent together, <laughs> uh, playing over 200 minutes uh, this season. I'm I'm real intrigued, though, to start with Tanev and Miro, Harley and Lindell, maybe. I like Harley and Lundqvist, though. And then you have Suter and Lindell is, is kind of where, where I'm thinking or... Uh, where my head's at. But at the same time, with how dominant Miro and Harley have been together, they're the best defensive pairing in terms of an expected goals percentage of the season, 62%. They don't give up a ton of goals either. <laughs> um, they're obviously very dynamic, but I think it's important that you bring another right shot defenseman into the mix with Tanev. You find a way to get Harley and Haskin in split up and maybe you put Haskin in in Lundquist and you have Harley and Tanev maybe that's going to be your uh, I guess shining pairing with Harley and Tanev that's a um a pairing that we haven't thought about too much I'm sure some of you have I, I haven't really thrown it out there um and then maybe Haskin in reunites with Suter or, well, you probably wouldn't put him with Suter as two lefties. Uh, excuse me. Maybe you put Haskin in with Lindell 
Uh, Hearts can do with Lundquist. Uh, this is where we can get carried away. Um, but I, I would love to begin with Haskinen, Tanev, Hartley and Lindell would make a ton of sense because you want to leave Suter and Lundquist, but I would like to see Harley and Lundquist together. Um, I, I think that would be an intriguing pair, pairing uh, of two young guys um, that, of course, like to play some offense. Harley's a reliable defender, and I think Lundquist has really grown. Uh, didn't have a, a phenomenal game uh, against San Jose, but he's made some strides. Um but, but yeah, I wanted to throw that out there a bit uh, w- with uh, with Chris Tanna possibly being into the lineup tonight. Of course, we'll know here um, probably within the next few hours if he is in San Jose and, and all of that good stuff uh, as you're uh, taking this information in. So I would love to hear your defensive pairings. I, I don't think the Stars can go uh, a ton wrong, by the way. Um but I think the important thing and the key is is to break up Lindell and Hockenpah. And, and I think Hockenpah will probably be the odd man out. He'll, he'll probably be the uh, seventh defenseman um, with Joel Hanley. And this is a, another uh, note coming out of practice yesterday. Uh, Joel Hanley was uh, waived and 24 hours for another NHL team to pick him up. If not... He will return to uh, Cedar Park and play with the uh, Texas Stars. And, and Pete DeBoer uh, said wonderful things, glowing reviews about Hanley. And he's done such a great job this season as a, as a seventh defenseman. He's played probably a bit more than we all expected, and he's played admirably. <laughs> he, he steps in. He does a hard job having to sit up in the rafters and, and watch games more often than not. And when he jumps in, he just seems to be a great fit and plays the right way, and for what he lacks in overall talent (laughs) and ability maybe, uh, he makes up for it with with hard work. He's always, more often than not, in the right position, and um, he's helped the Stars kind of... uh, get through the season. He, he really did with, with Hayskin and being down with an injury and Hawk and pot and, and Lundquist at some point, um, he was, he was much needed and, um, it's unfortunate. Hopefully he gets a, a, a chance to play somewhere else. I think he can play every day on some teams. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> and uh, maybe a, a team will take a flyer on him and he gets an opportunity. So, uh, Joel Hanley has been waived and, uh, we'll know information as, uh, the day moves on as well. Let's move on to the San Jose Sharks. We'll preview San Jose a bit. Stars, of course, coming off that shootout victory last Saturday over the Sharks with a 3-2 win. Joe Pavelski returning to the tank. So much goodness coming out of this game. And let's touch on it a bit more in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by Sleeper. We're past the halfway point in the season, Stars fans, just about a month and a half remaining. And regardless of where the Stars are in the current standings, they're tied for first in the Central Division, by the way. I want to remind you that you could win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey. Because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. The playoffs are right around the corner. Be sure to beef up your wallet. Beef up that cash by winning with Sleeper, the official fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. It's so awesome because all you have to do is pick studs. You can pick the best players in the world. McDavid's, even Crosby, Nathan McKinnon, who's lighting it up. Pick more or less on sleeper projections for things like goals, assists. You can pick Jake Ottinger if you want. Try to get him, will him into a rhythm with saves plus minus or more in a given game. You correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. Stars fans, you can win a hundred times your bet on sleeper. You heard me correctly a hundred times your money playing daily fantasy hockey on sleeper. So start paying attention, nail those picks, and you could start winning big. Use promo code locked on NHL. You'll get up to a hundred dollars match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See sleeper terms of use for details and location. Availability. 
Stars looking to make it uh, three straight wins as they begin their three-game West Coast road trip. These trips always take me back to when I was uh, a young boy staying up way later than I was supposed to watching my 27 (laughs) and uh, watching the stars in the Pacific division beat up on the ducks, Kings, you name it, sharks (laughs) uh, back in the day. So a couple late starts, we got a nine 30 start. You can catch the hometown broadcast on the Sirius XXM app. Excuse me. Just search stars uh, to take in Josh and Razor. But 9.30 starts on Monday. You get a 9 o'clock start on Friday for the Ducks and 9.30 against the Kings on Saturday night. So uh, get the coffee ready or uh, as I do, I drink a ton of Coca-Cola. That uh, is my uh, drink of choice and uh, I drink probably way too much of it. That keeps me up uh, and keeps me going throughout the day. Anyways, let's get into the, the nitty gritty of this San Jose Sharks team. Well, we've found out that uh, they can beat you if you allow them to. And the Stars and their puck management in the first period, especially back in Dallas, was a bit funky at some points. They really struggled on their offensive zone injuries. They gave the puck away way too much, and it resulted in a ton of odd man rushes uh, against, uh, against Otter. And uh, the defense and forwards were caught tracking back way too often. Pete DeBoer mentioned they have underrated skill. <laughs> and uh, Granlin is, is a good player. Uh, Duclair, who's really been playing some of his best hockey lately. Uh, no surprise with the deadline <laughs> right around the corner. It's deadline week. So um, teams uh, are going to be looking at guys like Duclair uh, and even Mike Hoffman. Uh, Hoffman, who's uh, a veteran uh, that scored nine goals this season. Um, but yeah, if, if the stars play or excuse me, if the sharks play aggressive and they're on their toes, like they were a, a few days ago, then, um, uh, the stars can struggle, even though they dominated possession towards really the, the last two periods and they really dominated, um, play. They just could not solve Magnus Krona. Uh, I would be shocked if they don't go with Magnus Krona once again. Uh, he's just made two NHL starts, but uh, sometimes you got to ride a goaltender that can either be hot or have some sort of kryptonite uh, against another team. But uh, the, the Stars played uh, really, really great uh, against San Jose. Just did not come up with a, uh, a an, an easy win, so to speak, <laughs> had to had to go the distance. By the way, I didn't mention it in yesterday's episode. Uh, what a uh, what a shootout goal from Jamie Ben. Did not expect that <laughs> out of uh, uh, Jamie Ben by uh, any any means. Uh, I would love to take a look at the expected goals against um, for Corona in that game. That was pretty magnificent uh, what he put up <laughs> um i have to check the uh hockey stat cards uh on that one because the stars peppered him with shots constantly and he just answered the bell um he answered uh, every single call okay sorry as I, i'm pulling this up this isn't the best way to do a podcast anyways 5.18 was the expected goals against 5.18 <laughs> and he only allowed two goals and one of them was on the power play incredible performance uh what uh, he put up uh Robertson though has scored in back-to-back games which uh, is a great sign Joe Pavelski um has been playing very very well recently he makes his return to the tank I think it's his is it his third return to San Jose maybe it's his fourth um and uh, that top line's been in a bit of a uh A point drought, a scoring drought, uh, but playing better. And uh, one of the keys, I think, for the Stars moving in is the Duchesne line, too, because Tyler Sagan, uh, of course, with his absence, DeBoer's tried to throw a couple of different players with them, and it hasn't necessarily blended perfectly. Uh, Delandry has gotten his shots. Uh, We even saw Craig Smith towards uh, the end of the game uh, against San Jose. And Pete DeBoer mentioned yesterday that he needs uh, or or he expects Marchment and Duchesne to to drive that line a bit more. He said they can't just wait on Sagan to return. 
they need to be better. And uh, he's expecting Duchesne and them to carry some of that load without Sagan in the lineup. And, and Marchment uh, has struggled to to find uh, some of his uh, points lately as well. Just uh, no points in his last five. Um, he, he's a couple of points from co- uh, tying his career high. Um, and uh, the, the Stars have certainly, as a group, have not been as balanced offensively. They've had some lines in spurts <laughs> uh, be productive, but it hasn't been that steady drip that we've seen throughout the season. And of course, injuries and schedule have all played a role in that. Hopefully with the ease of schedule and the possibility of practicing a bit more and just working on some more things, um, we'll, we'll start to, to see that increase as the month of March rolls along. Stars still in first place in the Central Division. Winnipeg is tied with them. They still have three games in hand, so the Stars need to win games where they can continue to uh, put some points uh, in the pocket. So, uh, yeah, Keys is just, uh, I I think Marchment and Duchesne need to to get going once again, and uh, and Duchesne's been really good in terms of creating offense and facilitating. Um, and uh, as, as I mentioned in February, just execution, right? And I would love to be up here and this is the strategy. This is what they, they need to play, need to do. But we've seen that. Um, I've played really well. Just need to score. <laughs> and, it, and it's always easier said than done. It's always easy for me to sit behind here on this mic and say, you got to score. You got to score more um, for an offense that is top three in the National Hockey League. If they could suppress defenses a bit more or suppress offenses, I should say, they'd be in a better position. And hopefully with Chris Tanev possibly making his star's debut, he will help that cause along with Jake Ottinger being more consistent. We're asking a lot of things, but if they do improve in in a few of these areas, stars are going to be a dangerous dangerous team come playoff time. We're, we're, we're just all waiting for it to culminate together, right? Towards the end of the season. And um, I don't know if the stars have played their best hockey. I, I, I think we could sit here and say that they haven't um, at for, for long stretches of the season. There's, there's been moments and there's been games um, where you say, Oh yeah, that that's their potential. And um I think that's that's good. I think that's good. They're trying to peak at the right time. And with the hopes of Sagan coming back here soon and the Stan Coven impact, Tanev impact, they start peaking at the right time. And and that's and that's what we're waiting for and and truly is the uh is the question with this team. We're not uh, overly concerned with what's going on a ton in March and February. The real question that the stars have to answer is come playoff time. And part of those expectations are on us and on themselves. They didn't shy away from it heading into the season. They believe as believe as uh, that they are Stanley Cup cha- or not champions, Stanley Cup contenders. That's the expectation that they've set for themselves. As high as they've ever been um in the last decade. Truly, as high as maybe they've ever been. <laughs> um truthfully, and um that's the real test. It's come playoff time. Uh whether they win the division, what seed they get, um we we care right now, but when game 1 starts, And round one, all goes out the window. Prove it, right? Prove it. Um, And hopefully they live up to that, right? Hopefully they live up to that. Okay, enough for that little monologue from me. Got dramatic there for a second. Um, I'll be more dramatic in the next segment. Shooting star. We were on a heater in February, and I blew it with a Sam Steele pick, even though he did score, almost scored. Almost scored. Key is there. Um, <laughs> uh, shooting star. Let me know your pick in the comment section below. Who is going to lead the stars to victory tonight at the tank in San Jose? I'll let you know my pick in just a moment. 
Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. That's what brings home the winning trophy and is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts, your number one ride or die has exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Hopefully, like Chris Tanev, fitting in with the Dallas Stars, except the Stars don't really get their money back. But at the same time, with that 75% of his salary retained, uh, who cares? <laughs> because with eBay Motors, by the way, Stars fans, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that W. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. By the way, Locked On Sports today, the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel, is available on YouTube, plus Amazon Fire TV on the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports today is here for you covering top sports stories of the day 24-7. So go ahead and follow them. Be sure to subscribe to Locked On Stars. Follow me on the X thing, Enjoy the Jet 19, plus Locked On Stars as well. Don't miss uh, some of the uh, things and takes, opinions being thrown out uh, in the universe uh, pretty much every single day. Speaking of the universe, shooting star. All righty, Stars fans. I need to get back on the horse here. Um, oh, there, there, there are so many options, Stars fans. So many options, and I haven't picked him yet, and it feels right. It feels right, and maybe I should have picked him sooner, but I'm going with Logan Stankoven. Mr. Stanky. Going with Stankoven with the shooting star. And yes, you could say that is a bit of a safe bet because he has four points in his first five National Hockey League games, but spare me. I want him to light the lamp a few times. Who knows? A hat trick. I'll call it a hat trick in San Jose. The Stars need something spectacular to happen in the month of March. It feels like we've been deprived of that big moment so far. Um, and that takes nothing away from his first NHL goal. But, I mean, truly just like one of those games. Yeah, Logan Stanko, let's let's do it. Why not? I'm not afraid to be wrong. Okay, so uh, Stanky, uh, a hat trick tonight in San Jose. Why not? Let me know who you are picking for tonight's shooting star. Hopefully it's, to be honest, Chris Tanev. <laughs> Hopefully he comes in and you're like, yep, all right, Stars found their missing piece. Um, but Canada doesn't want to let him leave. Calgary doesn't want to let him leave. <laughs> let him go. Let him go. He's rightfully ours now, okay? He's rightfully a Stars. And uh, we will cheer him on for the end of time or till the end of this playoff run, whichever one. Uh, comes first. Alrighty, that'll do it for me today. Hope you're having a wonderful Tuesday, by the way. Hope you're enjoying your week so far and hope you're enjoying Stars hockey recently. It's trade deadline week, man. There's going to be a ton of things happen. Buyers, sellers, uh, this is when it gets hectic and it should be a lot of fun. Uh, last year's NHL deadline was crazy. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get that. That was pretty rare, I feel like. And, uh, I don't know if there's quite the assets or uh, quite the players of that nature available too. Last year was sort of an anomaly in the National Hockey League. Uh, I wish it was uh, like that a bit more. <laughs> Brings a, a ton more eyes uh, to to the NHL. That's for sure. Okay, we'll talk about the Sharks game tomorrow. We'll break it down. If Tanev plays, we'll talk about him. If not, we'll wait till Anaheim on Friday. Enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you tomorrow, Stars fans. So long.